Hi friends, in this tutorial we will be implementing Spring Boot Apache Camel JDBC component example for inserting and retrieving records from MySQL. For this I will be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to Apache Camel, standalone Apache Camel examples. The example that we will be implementing today is Spring Boot Apache Camel JDBC component MySQL Hello World example. I will be sharing the URL along with the YouTube video. In previous tutorial we had implemented Apache Camel Spring SQL component example for inserting and retrieving records from MySQL. In that example, we made use of Spring XML configuration. In this tutorial, we'll be making use of Spring Boot and Apache Camel JDBC component for inserting and retrieving records from MySQL. The JDBC component, it enables us to access databases through JDBC, where SQL queries such as select and the operations such as insert update, they are sent in the Camel message body. This JDBC component, it makes use of the standard JDBC API, unlike the SQL component which makes use of Spring JDBC. We'll be looking at the Apache Camel SQL component and Spring Boot in the next tutorial. The application that we'll be developing is as follows. We'll be developing a Spring Boot application. So we'll be having a Spring Boot controller where we'll be exposing a GET API and a POST API. Using the POST API, we'll be inserting employee records in the MySQL database and using GET, we'll be retrieving all the employee records from the MySQL database. Both the GET and the POST API, they will be invoking the Camel roots which in turn will make use of Camel JDBC for interacting with MySQL. Also Camel JDBC, it will require the data source bean which will be provided by the Spring Boot JDBC. So let us begin with the implementation part. This is the Maven project that we'll be creating. So go to Eclipse and create a new Maven project. Create a simple project. Group ID I'll be giving it as com.java news. Artifact ID I'll be giving it as spring camel jdbc. Next we'll be adding the required dependencies. So the dependencies that we'll be adding are first will be some Spring Boot dependencies such as Spring Boot Start Web dependencies as we are going to expose REST APIs. Then we have the Spring Boot Starter JDBC dependency. This will provide us as the data source bean. Then we have Camel Spring Boot, Camel JDBC. And since we are going to make use of MySQL database, therefore we need the MySQL Connected JDBC dependency. So copy these dependencies. Also the Spring Boot version we'll be making use of is 2.0.1.release. So copy these dependencies. Go to the pom.xml. Paste these dependencies here. In the previous tutorial, we had seen the advantages of using Spring Boot JDBC. One advantage was that we do not need to create any data source bean. So we do not write, uh, need to write any configuration file to create this data source bean. Spring Boot JDBC it automatically reads the application.properties file, gets the MySQL or any other database uh, properties that it needs and it automatically creates the data source bean for us. So let us create these properties file. Go to Eclipse, source main resources. And create a new file named application.properties. Application.properties. Copy these properties. Next, we'll be creating the schema-mysql.sql file. So it, here we specify the initialization scripts. Spring Boot JDBC it will automatically run these initialization scripts on startup. The naming of this file schema and MySQL is very important. As in the pom.xml we have specified the MySQL dependency. Therefore Spring Boot JDBC will know that uh, the database being used is MySQL. So it will look for schema hyphen MySQL file. If suppose we were specifying H2 database in, instead of uh, MySQL then Spring Boot uh, JDBC it would have looked for schema-h2.sql file. So do remember to name this file as schema-mysql.sql. Go to Eclipse and create this file. In this file we specify the initialization script. So what we want is that if a table named employee ta already exists then drop it and again create the employee table. So this employee table it has two fields employee id and employee name. So copy this initialization script. Next we will be creating the domain class named employee. It has two fields employee id and employee name. So these two fields we are going to save in the MySQL database. Let us create this class. Create a new class.
पैकेज गिव इट एस कॉम डॉट जी न्यूज डॉट मॉडल कॉपी द कंटेंट्स ऑफ दिस क्लास Next, we'll be configuring the service class where we'll be configuring the camel root. In this service class, we auto wire the data source bean, which is provided to us by Spring Boot JDBC. So, in this service class, we'll be configuring two routes. First is the insert route, and the other is the select route. Using the insert route, we'll be inserting the employee details in the MySQL database. Also, as we are making use of camel JDBC, we'll need to create the insert query and then set it in the camel body. We'll be doing this in the camel processor. So, let us first have a look at the insert route. So here we have defined the insert root. We start from the direct endpoint direct colon insert. This direct uh, endpoint it will be called from the controller class using the producer template. The root then calls the process method of the uh, processor that we define here. Here from the exchange we get the employee object. This is the employee object the details of which are to be inserted in the MySQL database and from the controller we will be passing it to this direct endpoint using the producer template. So once we get this employee object we create the insert query and then this insert query we set it in the body now that we have the required insert query in the body we make a call to the camel jdbc which then inserts the employee details in the mysql database the other route that we'll be defining is the direct colon select this will again be called from the controller class but this will be called from the get rest api whereas the above query it will be called from the post api that we'll be exposing so here whenever we want all the employee details from the mysql database we'll be calling this direct colon select a root the select query that we are going to use for this root it has no parameters therefore we are directly setting it as a constant in the body and from here we are call making a call to the camel jdbc so this query will then get executed select star from employee once executed we get all the employee details which we store in the array list and then set this array list in the body of the exchange let us create the service class go to eclipse create a new class package will be com.javanews.service copy the contents of this class next we'll be creating the controller class from where we'll be calling the apache camel root using the producer template so producer template it is provided by apache camel and it allows us to send message exchanges to endpoints in a variety of different ways so this makes it easy to work with camel endpoint instances from java code so from the java code we'll be making a call to the direct endpoint that we have defined in the controller class we'll be exposing two rest endpoints one is a get api and the other is a post api in the get api we'll be fetching all the employee details from the mysql database this makes call to the camel select route that we have defined the post api will be inserting the employee details in the mysql database this calls the camel insert route with the employee details to be inserted so in the controller here we have defined two rest endpoints one is a get api and the other is a post api in the get api we make a call to the direct colon select uh, route that we have defined in the camel configuration so this it will return us a list of employees and we make this call to the camel endpoint using the producer template that we have auto wired here in the post api we make a call to the direct colon insert route using the producer template also when we make a call to the direct colon insert we also pass the employee object the details of which are to be inserted into the mysql database so we'll be re uh, receiving this employee object as a body when the post call is made so let us create this controller class go to eclipse and create a new class package give it as com dot java in use dot controller copy the contents of this class Finally, we'll be creating the Spring Boot Bootstrap class with the Spring Boot application annotation. So, go to Eclipse, and create a new class. Package I'll be giving it as com dot Java news. Copy the contents of this class. So we are done with all the changes. Let us start the application. Run as Java application. The application it has started. If you now go to MySQL database, here we will be selecting the boot DB database that you have specified in the application or properties. Do a select star 
from employee so currently there are no records here next we'll be making a post call using the advanced as client here so the url is localhost 880 slash employees and in the body we are passing the employee id and the employee name so these details will then get saved in the mysql database so it has returned 200 if we now go to select star for employee the details have been inserted i'll be inserting one more record here Now we'll be testing the get API. The URL is the same, only the uh, type is your get to a send. And here we are getting the employee details back. Hope this tutorial was useful. You can download the source code from here. Thank you.